Netflix, we help customers build great products that make the world a better place. With a global team of 160,000 people in 30 countries, we are a manufacturing partner to some 1,000 leading brands across diverse industries. We're proud to bring our customers' products to life through our sustainable operations and expertise in advanced manufacturing built over 50 years of experience. Kira Witten. I'm the Vice President of Sustainability at Flex and the President of the Flex Foundation. Flex is a $24 billion diversified advanced global manufacturer. We make everything from home appliances to data centers to autonomous vehicle modules and everything in between that you can think of. And today I'm really excited to have a conversation with David Gessler, our Vice President of Procurement, Commodity Management, and Supplier Quality Compliance and sustainability for Flex. So as part of David's role, he has oversight of working with our suppliers to ensure that they are um, supporting our sustainability goals as well as trying to drive a more accelerated set of goals for sustainability uh, across a wide range of topics. So what we want to talk about today is is just how do we how do we manage these partnerships and and what does it look like and and how do we how do we get there faster whether it's through organizations like the science based targets initiative or the cdp we're going to talk about how we can leverage these functions to help us achieve our sustainability agenda so with that david i'm going to start with the first question so how should companies rethink their supply chains uh, and their partnerships in through the lens of sustainability. Uh, first, Kira, thank you very much for the opportunity to have a conversation with you today. Um, you know, over the time of the global pandemic in the supply chain world, we of course have been working on uh, supply continuity and shortages and dealing with all those issues. But let's talk about sustainability. It's also been very important over the last two years to keep that focus on sustainability and let me boil this down into three really reasons is, you know, when you're chasing sustainability and emission base, um, getting out of the silo based approach and looking at the entire value chain is important. Uh, you can make progress uh, individually, but you can make substantial more progress if you're looking at this across the supply chain. Um, the second is deepening those partnerships with the supply chain, which has added benefit. Um, and the third is reputational. Um, so a few additional comments on these. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time looking internally, as you know, Kira, but uh, we've recently started over the past year to really going both to our suppliers and our customers, and we think we can make much better progress if we look at the entire value chain. And what we found is working with our key partners um, and suppliers is we're developing deeper, deeper partnerships, and we do hope that that leads to stickiness in those relationships and ultimately continuity of supply. And then reputationally, both in the public um, and internally, uh, we find that employees, it's also important internally and as well as externally from a reputational perspective. Um, so I'd like to come back, uh, Kira, and maybe ask you, you're a little bit more involved than I am uh, in the customer side of it. Um, I'm heavily involved in the supplier side, and I see a little bit of what, what the customers are doing, but maybe you can comment uh, of what Flex is doing on the customer side as we look at the entire value chain. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, as a, as a contract manufacturer, we're an extension of our customer's supply chain and an extension of their operations. And so we are seeing a dramatic increase in, in requests for information, requests for shared objectives around sustainability, uh, because our customers care about the environment. And it's being driven by a couple of things. I mean, obviously, it's the right thing to do. And we all know that climate change is a, you know, an existential threat to us. So, you know, our customers are increasingly focused on this, but but also it's being driven by end market and consumer behavior. You know, in a recent study, 85% of consumers that were surveyed said that they have shifted their buying decisions to more sustainable vendors over the last several years. And we see that trend continuing. So there's a lot of market pressure on our customers to act in a more sustainable way. And so they're coming to us as their manufacturer partner to help them achieve their their sustainability goals um, but the other 
piece of this is, is as we think about our long-term strategy of Flex is, you know, our ambition to be that most trusted manufacturing partner. So part of our vision and how we want to grow is by working with companies that have share our vision, share our values, and want to work towards a more um, sustainable future. So part of our just business strategy and where we're growing, uh, we're naturally working with companies that are or have an interest in sustainability. So we're seeing a lot more um, um, partnership just from the nature of who our customers are. And what I would say is that the other piece, though, uh, in terms of a challenge, if you will, is, um, is scope three emissions. So if we think about uh, greenhouse gas emissions in, you know, scope one and two are what's within our control, what we use and what we purchase. But scope three is where this gets really interesting and quite frankly, pretty challenging um, is, you know, scope three is our indirect emissions. And so we are a contributor to our customers scope three emissions. So how do we partner with them to quantify what those emissions are? And how do we work together through uh, whether it's design for um, reuse, whether it's our circular economy solutions to help reduce those scope three emissions um, by recycling, uh, refurbishing, as well as logistics and on all the things that you can think about that are indirectly contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. We're trying to work with our customers to help deliver solutions for them um, on this. But um, you know, what I would say is that every customer that we talk to is in a different place in their journey. And so it's important for us to really listen and understand where our customers are in their journey and where they want to go. And then hopefully we can, um, you know, provide them with information and best practices to help them get there faster. So, you know, in terms of that that value chain and that that supply chain idea, um, you know, there's a lot of knowledge sharing that we're doing with our customers. But I know um, as you're working through the supply chain and getting our suppliers to understand our objectives and how they contribute, you know, how do you how do you even go about starting a conversation with the supply chain around sustainability? How do you get our suppliers to buy in and, and understand and um, see value in what we're trying to do? That's a great question. I, I think it starts internally to ask the question, why? And you mentioned some of them. I think it's the right thing to do. I think there's a financial reason. Uh, you know, we can see what investors are doing. Uh, there's a reputational thing that we touched on briefly. So I think it's pretty easy to answer the question, why? So then you start with education internally. Um, and then you go from an education, you got to develop the right partnerships. We're using uh, CDP. Uh, we've developed our own measurement criteria. We're, we're adapting uh, those so our suppliers can use them also. Um, so the partnership uh, piece is key. Uh, and then a lot of it's communication. Um, and when we started our program, uh, we knew that it was going to uh, be difficult with 15,000 suppliers, where do you start? Um, and to, to be successful, uh, you have to have some standardization. So working with third party uh, partners like CDP helps. Um, we made investments, uh, we brought people in to interface with suppliers. Um, we communicate with suppliers and we're making investments in talking to suppliers. Um, we've done over 60 one-on-one -on -one educational uh, meetings. We're providing supplier seminars. Uh, and the last one I think is uh, the most important is setting reasonable goals. Um, you know, we've chosen to get 100% of our preferred suppliers uh, to have reduction targets by 2030. And we're actually ahead of schedule, which is great. And I think uh, we're ahead of schedule because we took some time to plan and we took time to educate. And some of the first input we got back from our suppliers uh, was not great because that's because they didn't understand. But what we found is after you educate, after you provide material, after you show them that you're willing to be a partner, uh, then they come on board. And the only way we're going to make a difference is together. So um, that's the approach we took and that's how we started. 
That's fantastic, and and it's it's great that we're off to a to a strong start. We spent most of the conversation talking about the E in ESG, but I want to I want to touch on the social portion for a second uh, because equally as important to the environment is as a manufacturer. You know, we are a company of of people, 165,000 employees, and and our suppliers are an extension of that. So. Um, how are you looking at, you know, the the social side of our suppliers and, and whether that's labor practices, diversity, equity and inclusion? What are you seeing um, in the supply chain right now from um, a social aspect of sustainability and how are you looking at that? You know, very similar to the uh, environmental aspect, right? So in, in the news media and everywhere else, you see it's uh, a much heightened awareness, uh, faster awareness, um, more in the media. Um, suppliers are more concerned about it. Uh, so it's partnering with, again, third parties like the Responsible Business Alliance, RBA, uh, utilizing third party standards and making sure that you're working within the supply chain, the value chain you know, up and down from suppliers and customers uh, to reach towards those common goals. Um, so we see a very similar model, how we approach um, everything from diversity to equity um, in, in the supply chain. That's really great. Well, as you can see at Flex, we have a very broad um, um, definition of sustainability, and we're working on things across a number of fronts, across the E, the S, and as well as governance and transparency that we're very committed to. Um, so, you know, thank you, David, for sharing some of your insights and how we're approaching this through our value chain. And thank you to Bloomberg for hosting us and letting us have a few minutes to share a bit more about our sustainability program at Flex. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kara.